What is your name, please? My name is Mike Mercado. My name is Mike Mercado. My name is Mike Mercado. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Mike Mercado. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Larry Blyden, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is brought to you tonight by a new hefty bag. Two bags thick, two bags strong. The plastic bags that are built for keep. Hefty bags. And now here's your host on To Tell the Truth, Bob Collins. again to, to tell the truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, I tell you, in front of you, you'll find an envelope. Why not open it and take the copy that's in there out and follow along with me as I read you this first story. I, Mike Mercado, for 13 years was known as Brother Solomon, a monk in the order of the Christian Brothers and Prefect of Discipline at a Roman Catholic boys' school. During those years, I was often disturbed by an inner conflict between devotion to the monastic life and my early career in the entertainment world. Last year, I made the decision to leave the Brotherhood and resume my career as a musician. I asked for dispensation and left the school on May 8, 1966. Since then, I have made appearances on radio and television, played in cabarets, and have cut two records. In my professional appearances as a pianist, I am billed as the Swinging Monk. Signed, Mike Mercado. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Mike Mercado. We'll start the questioning with the star of the Broadway hit, The Apple Tree, Mr. Larry Blyden. Thank you, Uncle Bud. Um, I don't know, what, what do, you say, do I say brother? No, well, number one? How's that? That's fine. Uh, <laughs> why are the robes that you're wearing brown? Uh, is that the monastic order? No, the order I was in wore black. I'm wearing the theatrical habit since I've left the order. I see. Uh, number two, are you allowed? Are you still a member of the of the uh, Brotherhood? Yes, I am. Uh, number three, uh, are you required to wear anything at all, or can you? You know what I mean. I mean, he's wearing a different. I wish I hadn't said it that way, but what I really mean is, can you change from that robe to civilian clothes or to any other thing that you want to now? This this is not a uh, this is not the true habit of the order, having received. Well, Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. Number one, it looks like a Franciscan habit, the one you're wearing. Uh, yes, based on that idea, yes. Thank you. Uh, no, number one, are you still a, a member of the order? No, I'm not a member of the order, no. You're not. Uh, number two, who gives dispensation for this kind of thing? The Vatican. The Vatican. Number three, what is the sacred rota? What is the what? The sacred rota. Am I saying it wrong? The rota. rota. The rota. I don't know. Do you know number two? No, I do not. Oh. Um, number one, can you go back if you wanted to? I'm um, not sure about that. You're not sure. Number three, do you make wine? You couldn't have had in mind the sacred rota rooter, could you? <laughs> no. uh, Tom Poston. That's a cheerleader oh, in a con. No. Uh, well, number, uh, number one, do you know what these ladies are talking about when they talk about the rota? No, I don't. No, nor do I, but... Uh... <laughs> number, number one, where were you a monk, please? Uh, in London. And number two, please? The island of Santorini. Where is that? In the Aegean archipelago. Number three, please? Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay. Uh, uh, number two, do you know another famous monk who plays the piano? I believe there is one in America, yes. What's his name? Uh, I, it begins with a, a Theolonius. I'm afraid I do not know the last name. That's okay. Number three, do you have any regrets about doing this, making this change? No, Peg I have no regrets. Peggy Cash. Uh, number one, um, since you're the swinging monk, could you tell me who's the singing nun? Uh, <laughs> Sister Smile, I think the translation. I don't know the... Thank you. Well, number three, do you know whether she's still in, uh, in the convent? Sol Sourire, I believe so. You believe she's still in the convent? Yes. Um, number two, did you entertain while you were in the monastery? No, I did not. Oh, think what they missed. 
num number three, is yours a uh, cloistered order? I mean, was your order a cloistered order? Oh, you're trying number, to... number three. Yes, it was. It was a cloistered order. Number one. That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. So get your thoughts together and mark your ballots, if you will. Mark them at once, without change and without any consultation. Just vote now, please. It's very difficult. Vote for very, number one. Very, very difficult. Number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for each incorrect vote. No, Are your ballots all marked? Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, I found it very difficult to tell, so I ended up voting for a fellow who looks a little bit like London Lee. No, that's not true. It, it, I voted for number three because I believed that he had the spirit that would take him into the field of music and where he would play. Peggy. You know, it's funny, but the singing men also left. I guess they hear that band. I don't know. <laughs> I, I voted for number one because the Christian brothers, uh, there are lots of them in Ireland, and London's so close. So I voted for one. <laughs> Larry Blyden. I voted for number one because if he is a monk, he looks like a swinging monk. <laughs> number one for the same reason, but I would put it differently. I think he looks like a jolly monk. Very well. There we have it with the votes all in and the minds made up. So let's find out now which of these three gentlemen is in truth Mike Mercado. Will the real Mike Mercado please stand up? What? What? Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Mike Mercado has consented to play for us, so let's hear how Brother Solomon swings. Brother? agree they missed a lot in not having you play for them there in the order now number two what is your real name and what do you really do my name is Demetrius Koutsouras and I'm with the international division of the Bank of New York <laughs> and number three what is your real name and what do you do my name is Ray Roman I'm an export manager for Kaiser Roth thank you well, I guess the uh, panel just got a little too smart there. Almost completely smart, but there still was one incorrect vote, and that's worth $250, gentlemen. Thank you all very much for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> we'll meet our next team of challengers in just a minute, right after this message. And now, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Flora Lewis. My name is Flora Lewis. My name is Flora Lewis. Follow along again, if you will, panel. I, Flora Lewis, have written a factual book about the collision in 1966 of two United States military planes high in the air above Palomares, Spain. They exploded 
showering the earth and sea with tons of shattered metal and four unarmed hydrogen bombs. Three of the bombs were quickly recovered. The fourth fell into the sea and was the subject of one of the most intensive search operations of the 20th century. Hundreds of highly skilled experts probed the bottom of the sea. After 80 nerve-wracking days, the H-bomb was finally retrieved. The mid-air accident, the search for the bomb, its eventual recovery, and the fear that overcame the citizens of Palomares are the subject of my recently published book called One of Our H-Bombs is Missing. Signed, Flora Lewis. <laughs> These three ladies, as you heard, all claim to be Flora Lewis. We'll start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. I'm of two minds. I am proud to say that Flora Lewis is a dear friend of mine, and I'm sad to have to disqualify myself. <laughs> okay, Kitty. Tom. Oh, uh, well, all right. Number two was the material that you used for background in this book. Wasn't a lot of it classified? How did you get at it? It took a long time, and what? it was classified, a lot of it. Uh, I was particularly proud of, of the uh, people responsible for recovering this because of the intensive work that they did to get at it. But it did scare people a lot, didn't it, number one? Yes, it did. Tell you me mean... what you thought they felt the danger was. You mean the people in Spain? Well, yes. Over here, it was a long ways away. We knew it was unarmed and probably not dangerous. But what did they feel over there? I don't think they knew what to feel. But they were terrified? Not in the beginning. Number three, how did they become terrified? Well, there was a lot of propaganda, and things started to come out over the radio from Eastern Europe and from Western press outside of Spain. Say, thank you. Peggy Katz. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, was it in fact dangerous that, they, that, the, that, those unexploded, that unexploded bomb was under the water? Dangerous to the people or just... Well, dangerous like the water or dangerous to the... You know, it well, any... certainly was better to find it. Oh, well, that's the kind of an answer. Uh, number three, did any of the uh, radioactive stuff leach out in the water? In the water, no, but on the land. It did leach out under the land. Well, then they were understandably nervous. I don't blame them. Number two, were they suing the United States government? No, they didn't. They uh, had an agreement. I'm not talking about the government of Spain. I'm talking about Juan, number three, say Juan Valdez in his little uh, place there. Is he, are there any individual suits against the United States government? No, no suits have been filed that I've ever heard of. There's been what? I don't know of any suits that were filed. Oh, thank you. Uh, and number two, who, who was in charge of finding the bomb? The, uh, the United States Navy, was it? The military services, yes. Well, is it, does that mean, does it mean the Army? Larry Blythe. Uh, thank you. Number one, did you do all of your research in Spain? No, I did some of it in Spain, but I covered a great deal of territory. Uh, did you do any in Washington? Yes. Uh, number two, uh, were you there when this happened? No, I wasn't. How did you happen to decide to write this book? Well, it seemed to be a very exciting story. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in the people in Spain and what their reaction was. Number three, uh, did the government there in Spain help you to do any of your research work? Did they cooperate with you as you were working on it? By the time I came along to work on it, everybody was cooperative, really. Uh, number one, did you uh, draw any conclusions in your book as, as to the result of this uh, happening? By result, I don't think I understand exactly. Any conclusions about, uh, that you drew as a result of these bombs having been uh, lost, this one bomb having been lost? Was there a point of view to your book about what happened, or was it just a narrative? Well, I think just the, the, the dreadful menace that the H-bomb really is. That's it. It is time once again for you to mark your ballot, so please do so. Swiftly, promptly, and accurately, except for Kitty's, who has disqualified herself. That will count as an incorrect vote. Vote for, if you will, number one, number two, or number three. Ballot. All marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I uh, thought she looked like just the kind of an attractive, well-spoken young lady that Kitty would know. <laughs> Peggy. I heard that some of those farmers were still in the government. I voted for number three because when she said that the stuff leached out in 30 days, you'd think something would trickle out of a bomb that was in the ocean. 
Eighty. Eighty days, I mean. I think I've you got thirty days. Bang. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> I voted for number two. Uh for a sneaky reason, I just thought that I saw a sort of a look of friendship pass. So I voted for her because everybody looks bright and intelligent and literate and witty and adorable and marvelous and what else did I have to go on? And Kitty, you disqualify, I'm disqualify yourself, I'm... of course. Very well, there we have it. Votes all in, minds made up so far as they go. And now let's find out which of these three ladies in truth is Flora Lewis. Will the real Flora Lewis please stand up? <laughs> you will all be interested to know something that Kitty probably already knows, that Flora Lewis is a newspaper woman and lives in Paris with her husband, who is editor of the European edition of the New York Times. She is a syndicated columnist and recently received the Overseas Press Club Award for the best magazine reporting on foreign affairs. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Jane Chapin and I'm the managing director of the travel agency at Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> Thank you. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Martha McClintock, and I teach good grooming in the schools in the Albany, New York area. <laughs> Thank you. Checking the score, we find that there was one incorrect vote and one disqualification, which counts as an incorrect vote, so that means twice $250, a total of $500, ladies. Thank you very much for gracing our show. Good night, and God bless you. back with our next team and play another game in a minute but now listen to this and now let's meet our third team of challengers what is your name please my name is Gordy Howe my name is Gordy Howe my name is Gordy Howe follow along in your copies of this story if you will panel I, Gordy Howe, am sometimes called the Babe Ruth of ice hockey. In my career with the Detroit Red Wings, I have compiled an impressive group of statistics. I have played in more games than any other National Hockey League player. I have been voted the league's most valuable player six different times. I have been named to the All-Star team 17 times. And last month, I was given the Lester Patrick Trophy for outstanding contribution to hockey in the United States. In my 22 years in ice hockey, I have scored over 700 goals, more than any other player in history. Signed, Gordy Howe. <laughs> Very well, panel. These three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Gordy Howe. We'll start with Peggy Cash. Thank, Thank you. Number three, what position do you play? Right wing. Thank you. Number two, what team are you on? Detroit Red Wings. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, what team is Stan Nikita on? Chicago. Black thank Hawks. you. Number three, what team is Bobby Howe on? Chicago. Number two, what position does Boom Boom Jeffrey on play? Defense. On which team? New York. Number one, where are you from in Canada? Saskatchewan. Thank you. Number one, were you ever on the uh, cover of a national magazine? Yes. Oh, um, thank you. And number three, what is Reg Fleming known for? <laughs> I mean, he's a swell hockey player and all, but what else is he known for? Um, he has a slight temper, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there they go. Larry Blyden. Uh, number one, how many times have you been injured? Too many times. Uh, number three, were you out at all last year in, uh, in regular team play? Yes. How long were you out? One time or total. No, just, just the longest time that you were out. Three weeks. Uh, number three, when you throw one of those vicious blocks into somebody, what are you trying to do usually? Uh, get the advantage. It looks like you're trying to kill him. Uh, number one, where is Dawson City? I do not know. Uh, number three, what is the uh, capital of, uh, of uh, Quebec? Quebec City. Uh, number two, 
How can I get out of this? <laughs> Sidney Carlisle, our expert one, on sports. Are you those very own shorts you're wearing? Yes, they are. <laughs> you sure? Yes. <laughs> City. In the Yukon. Number two, is there an age limit on uh, hockey players? No. You can play as long as you want, no matter how old you get. Right. Oh, that's a good thing to know. Number three, what is the puck made out of that you shoot into the goal thing? Rubber. Rubber. Hard rubber. Hard what rubber. color is it, number two? Black. Um, number one, where did you learn how to ice skate? In Saskatchewan as a youngster. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, at a guess, number two, how fast would you say a puck is capable of traveling? In excess of 100 miles an hour. Oh, gosh. Number one, in view of that, uh, what form do most of your injuries take? Uh, have they taken in the past? I would say facial cuts from sticks. From sticks. Okay, number three, in your position, are you uh, blocked more often than you are a blocker? I don't think so, no. You block as often as you are blocked. Number two, what are those blocks called? I think it's some other name they use, don't they? Interference? Charging? No, number one, you know what I mean when you, when you push somebody uh, well, off the... Please, body checking. Checking? All right, number two, where do most of those fights start? They're so uh, frequent in, in hockey and exciting. Where do they start mostly? The referees. <laughs> <laughs> and a good note to end it on. <laughs> Mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. It's time for that now. Uh, Mark them at once without change, without any consultation. <laughs> and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one, bud. He looks the most like Babe Ruth, who, as we all know, was a left-handed <laughs> swinger. <laughs> Peggy Cat. I'm going to do something I never did before, but the more I talk to him, I really know who it is because I've seen him play so many times. I mean, he's gone by me like this, and I know it's you, it's, so I voted for no one. I mean, oh. it's number one. I know it's number one. It's got to be number one. I've seen him skate. If it's number two, I'll kill myself. Another... <laughs> <laughs> In other words, what you're doing is giving yourself a... I'm not I can't do it. I can vote. I, I'm sure it's You're disqualifying one. yourself this late in the game, in other words. I have to. All right. Okay, I babe. put on my glasses and I saw... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I tell you, it's uh, greater honesty has no woman. Uh, Larry Blyden. I was all set to vote for number one up there. Uh, and then I decided, since uh, number three was the only fella who knew where Dawson City was, and anybody from Canada ought to know that, so he sucked me in on that one. And as I was finishing it off, you see, the tail of that three got very short yeah. because I wasn't sure I'd done the right thing. But you said no changes, and so there it is, number three. Okay, <laughs> Kitty. Well, I'm no expert on ice hockey, but I know when I see darned pants. And that's why I asked him <laughs> if his pants were darned, because when I looked at him up there, he has the most beautiful darns in his pants, and they look well worn. Detroit can afford a new So pants. I voted for number one. <laughs> So the votes are all in, finally, and mine's made up after a fashion. Let's find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Gordy Howe. Will the real Gordy Howe please stand up? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, we had everything in that round. I think that we get that. <laughs> uh, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Dick Elliott. I'm a special representative with the Imperial Bank of Commerce in New York. Thank you, sir. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Warren Johnson. I'm an admin assistant with the Canadian Consulate General. <laughs> Checking the score, we find that... Combined with uh, Peggy's deliberate disqualification and uh, one incorrect vote, that's a total of two incorrect votes, twice $250, $500. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night and God bless you. We'll be back in a minute, but right now, this important message. 
Good night, panel. Be sure to join us next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Todman production. Johnny Olson speaking. Miss Carlisle dressed by Bill Blythe. Tonight's program was pre-recorded. <laughs> to tell the truth was brought to you tonight by Johnson's Pledge. Pledge for what you instantly as you die. Pledge. <laughs>